And earlier we saw President Cyril Ramaphosa addressing the World Science Forum in Cape Town. And that's where we find my colleague Francis Hurd, who is not with me in studio tonight, but has been tracking developments in Cape Town for us. Now, Francis, the president calling for tangible action here, saying take science outside of the labs. Yeah, and Bungiwe, looking back, I think one thing that came through very strongly in this address was the uh, what didn't sit well with many developing nations around COVID-19 vaccines. And I think he repeated it several times. He said that the in unequal access to vaccines when this pandemic hit was a gross violation of human rights and it contributed to deaths. Uh, he said that several times. He spoke about the developed world hoarding vaccines nations that were keeping vaccines uh, possibly for a second or third dose when many in Africa didn't even have the first dose and they went way beyond the needs of their citizens. So if you missed that address, I think that's what came through really strongly and also what many of the South Africans have been saying here, all the government delegations, that this is an honour for South Africans to host the World Science Forum. So just a reminder that this is a big global forum. It uh, should happen every two years. It was delayed by COVID-19. It started in Hungary, in Hungary, and then there was this immediate partnership with the UN body, UNESCO. And now we have uh, the World Science Academy, all these global science organizations, several countries, uh, students, universities from around the world here to talk about science and how science can change the world. Uh, we heard from some of the earlier addresses, uh, those kicking off this launch, and just uh, UNESCO saying, it's, it's difficult to preserve human capacity in science. And this is so, something that South Africa and many other developing nations are grappling with. We are talking about how do we get more skills? How do we nurture scientists here in South Africa? And that is something that the president mentioned. The problem is, especially with remote work, once they are skilled, they are able to go anywhere in the world, work for anybody, uh, anywhere they want to live. And that is a real problem problem that maybe the delegates here will grapple with. Uh, UNESCO also saying that uh, applauding South Africa for uh, sharing information about Omicron. So remember the reward we got at that time was that we can travel. Uh, we got those red lists around the world. Uh, but here scientists are saying that is the way forward, sharing knowledge. And certainly nobody should be punished for sharing knowledge. Uh, knowledge is what is power. And uh, she said that that same lives. She also said just one in three researchers around the world are women and that should change. So that is something that's also uh, here, the gender parity. And finally, Bongiwe, one of the American delegates said something really interesting. Uh, we have, he said that the SKA, this huge uh, uh, square kilometer array, the huge telescope basically that South Africa was chosen to host is perhaps the pyramid of our time, uh, perhaps the Stonehenge of our time. It's something quite incredible. And of course, that's a global partnership. Uh, but South Africa is really showing off what is happening around the SKA. And he said the, the difference is that the pyramids were done for the pharaohs. So science used to be up in the echelons for leaders, for rich people. Um, if we think about it, maybe a modern day example, cancer drugs, only for rich people. But now he said this should be about an SKA working for the good of humanity and all science working for the good of humanity and that is what the delegates to this World Science Forum will be discussing over the next few days. And of course, uh, that's uh, Francis Heard there coming to us live from the World Science Forum. Now, Francis, you may not see it, but we are keeping your seat warm here uh, at the office. So do hurry back. And of course, uh, that was President Cyril Ramaphosa as well addressing that particular gathering. Remember, this is his first address um, since we saw that uh, release of the Palapala report. And he's now, of course, back on official business, as we heard from the NEC uh, last night.